Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Before we start today's topic, I'd like to remind you that next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. If you have any questions related to internal styles practice, Xiu Dao or Chinese culture in general, please post them in the comments section or email me if you prefer to remain anonymous. So, please feel free to contribute your questions and I will do my best to answer them for you. Very often, I'm asked by some martial art practitioners about their level of practice. No matter how hard I try, it is really difficult to give a comprehensive and precise answer due to the nature of the practice. The reason is very simple. You need to see and show the big picture about different stages of a practice. So, sometimes I try to defer the question and try to avoid giving a direct answer. Or else, it will take a much longer time to answer it clearly. I always try to encourage others to keep working on their practice instead of discouraging them. Choosing affirmative words to answer this question is a good motivator to most people. As a martial art and show dog practice teacher, I feel it is an important policy. At least, I'm very careful in handling it. If you are a martial art teacher, I'm sure you must have experienced the same situation like I did. While other styles may have a well-defined stage of progression in practice, there is not much information available on the different stages in the internal styles. This is one of the major reasons why practitioners often do not know where their practice stands. As a result, they often lose direction in their practice. Losing both the direction as well as the sight of short and long-term goal is one of the key reasons why many practitioners gave up on their practice altogether. Like I mentioned in some of my previous video, I personally treat internal style practice as a way of life. Practice has become part of my daily life since I have gone through many different stages in practice over the last four decades. I have been fortunate to witness many great practitioners. Their practice has set benchmarks for me to achieve, which is why I consider them my role models and motivators in continuing my own practice. Speaking of different stages in practice, there are multiple methods of evaluation depending on the style, but this evaluation method mainly focuses on the effect of performance. I call this OOP or Objective Oriented Practice. Let me clear, clarify to all the computer programmers out there, I am not talking about Object Oriented Programming, but Objective Oriented Practice. It implies practitioners evaluate their practice based on some effect or result described in some martial art books. For example, in the Xing Yi community, very often people used Ming, An, Hua, and uh, or obvious force, hidden force, and uh, neutralizing force to describe the different Xing Yi levels. In Tai Chi and Bagua, there are similar concepts as well. My fundamental issue with such classification is the lack of clarity in definition. This often leads to practitioners over or underestimating their practice. This is the reason why I believe it is not a good method. Using vague or incomprehensible terms to describe different levels just doesn't work. So then, is there a better way to categorize skill levels? I think there is. 
With decades of practice and teaching experience, I have decided to classify internal style practice into eight different stages. This is the main subject for today's video. So, topics covered in today's video include first, importance of understanding the stage of practice. Second, carrier of skill. Third, eight stage method. Fourth, demonstration. Fifth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Importance of understanding the stages of practice. I have briefly introduced this topic in the previous part of this video. Now, let me introduce the Chinese term for it. Ceng ci. Ceng means level, layer, while ci means class, sequence. Together, this term is used to describe the meaning of stages or levels. I can say that without understanding this topic, a practitioner will not have a clear goals and direction in their journey of practice. I have observed that many people stopped practicing before reaching a high level because they lack a clear idea of the next level of practice. We are all aware of the benefits of a long-term practice, but sustaining long-term interest needs short-term goals so that practitioners are always aware of the next stage to work on in training. Furthermore, if you are a martial art teacher, pointing out a clear picture of different stages of practice will greatly motivate your students to keep going forward in practice. Having established this context, what is a useful and practical method to evaluate your practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Career of Skills Like I mentioned in the previous part of this video, traditionally, there have not been too many documents introducing a clear training path in the internal styles. However, some old martial art documents have detailed the practice method and expected results. So, even though those writings are not easy to follow for beginners, we can nonetheless use them as the general practice guidelines. What I'm trying to express is that in addition to setting up a clear training path based on those traditional documents, more importantly, we also need to focus on clarifying the specific stages in the training process. I use the term carrier of skills to emphasize the fact that in most if not all the Chinese training systems, single movement, forms, and routines, including both bare hand and weapon trainings, are the carriers of any desired and expected outcomes. Or skills. Choosing the right practice method and focusing on the right curriculum are both critical factors to your practice. The first factor, which is the right practice method, is determined by OOP, Objective Oriented Practice, or in other words, the objective of the training. A practitioner should aim at a specific outcome and try to achieve it using the appropriate training method. The second factor, which is the right curriculum or training content, will be the carrier of the skill. The training content acts as the carrier to any expected training outcome, which will be discussed in detail in the following topics. In summary, single movements, forms, and routines with the right training method are the key factors in traditional practice. Physical movement is the carrier of the skill. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is the model that I created to classify different stages in the internal styles. Topic 3. 8-Stage Method In the last century, 
different concepts have been created to classify different training stages. For example, Xing Yi has the three power concepts, which I have introduced in my prior video titled Decoding Martial Proverb 9 and Training vs. Age and Xing Yi Three Level Power. Link is in the description. Tai Chi and Bagua also have similar concepts, which I have introduced in a prior video titled Decoding Martial Proverb Number 8 Speed vs. Progress and the Full Secret Word of Tai Chi Puchant. Link is in the description. <coughs> However, those methods are not well start suited to classifying different practice stages. So, in order to systematically clarify this concept, I created a new model which I call the 8-stage method. Also, if you have watched some of my prior videos, you may still remember a Chinese term used in martial art community, which is jia zi. Literally, it means frame or structure. But in martial art practice, this term means movement, routine, and any static or dynamic martial movements. So, sometimes people say that martial art practice is the process of working on jia zi. It is a very commonly used term in Chinese martial art community in China. The model I'm introducing now is based on the efforts and the practice of working on jia zi. Those efforts and the practice are expressed by eight verbs representing eight specific approaches in training. Those eight stages are xue or learning, shun or smoothing, zheng or correcting, chai or analyzing, ding or stabilizing, huo or reviving, bian or changing, kong or emptying. Please keep in mind that in this video lecture series, very often I will use Chinese terms directly but will also include the English translations. If you have studied Chinese language before, you may also notice that one word can have multiple meanings depending on the underlying context since each character can be a word or just a building block of a word. So, if you see the meaning of a word here is different from uh, what you have studied before, that is totally understandable since you may have studied the word in a different context. Now, let me explain the eight stages one by one. First, the first stage is the Xue Jia Zi or learning the Jia Zi. Any martial art training starts from learning physical movements. So, the first step of any internal style training starts from learning single movements or routines. Imitation is the key activity here. You need to learn the movements as precisely and accurately as possible. Of course, you need to focus on details, but over focusing on details may overwhelm you at this stage and keep you from seeing the big picture of the style. So, my recommendation at this stage is to simply copy and repeat the movement as much as you can without worrying about the details. If you can memorize the movement and replicate the movement as close as possible to that of your teacher, that would be considered sufficient for this stage. The second stage is the Shun Jia Zi or smoothing the Jia Zi. After learning the basic movement, your movement will not be smooth enough due to lack of practice. So, spending enough time to repeat the routine in a relaxed manner in order to avoid unnecessary blockage in practice is the key objective. Committing the movement to muscle memory is also an objective at this stage. 
I'm reciting the concept of a soon or relaxation is more appropriate at this stage than the first stage since it is almost impossible to relax when you are copying and repeating other people's movements. So, smoothing your physical movements and, and removing any blockage or discontinuity is the main focus here. The third stage is the zheng jia zi or correcting the jia zi. Zheng means correcting. We all know that it is impossible to avoid mistakes during practice and they are a part of the learning process. So, a major responsibility of a teacher is to correct the student's jia zi. Traditionally, this stage also called nie jia zi. Nie is a verb which translates to shaping or manually correcting. It is a step in which teachers should physically correct their students' structure. But no matter what term we use here, the objective of this stage remains the same, which is to correct a student's mistakes. Actually, zheng jia zi or correcting the jia zi even is even more important than the first stage. A qualified teacher is absolutely critical to this stage. Of course, at the same time, the student has to be open-minded and to receive help, which is the key factor as well. <coughs> the fourth stage is the chai jia zi or analyzing the jia zi. So, what do you analyze? Well, in this stage, you analyze the martial application of each movement. Of course, this step should be under the guidance of your teacher, or else it will be very hard, if not impossible, to achieve that stage. It is worth noting that at this stage, you should focus on energy manifestation instead of mere physical movements. I have to tell you that a single movement often has multiple applications. It is not a feasible approach to know all of the applications while learning martial arts. At the very least, it is efficient in terms of time consumption, if not totally impossible to achieve. So, understanding and analyzing the application of each movement in order to help you practice the movement correctly in a meaningful way and focusing on quality over quantity of applications is critical to this stage. The fifth stage is the ding jia zi or stabilizing the jia zi. The term ding or stabilizing can also be translated to mean fixing. After you master a movement and its application, you also need to internalize the movement. Then you can precisely and accurately demonstrate the movements whenever necessary. At this stage, you should try to replicate the movement as closely as possible to those of your teacher. When I teach Xing Yi, I expect my students' movements and the flavor of their movements to be as close as possible to mine. If other people knowledgeable in the style can recognize a practitioner as my students purely on the basis of their movements, I would consider that student to have achieved the fifth stage. The sixth stage is Huo Jia Zi or reviving uh, transmitting the Jia Zi. Any movement without martial intention is called Si Jia Zi or Dead Jia Zi. Only after martial intent or martial spirit has been injected into the form will it be called Huo Jia Zi. This is why I use the word reviving to describe this stage. Another English word describing this stage is uh, transmitting. This is the key stage for someone to be considered a high-level practitioner. You may have noticed that many practitioners lack martial intent or martial spirit in their demonstrations, causing their movements to appear hollow. So, 
reviving the forms and transmitting your understanding of the martial application through the form is a sign of a high level practice. Necessary for achieving that stage. The seventh stage is the Bian Jiazi or changing the Jiazi. I believe that in an advanced level of a martial art practice, you should be able to express your personal understanding of the practice. So, modifying the, the form to suit your personal understanding and expression while still adhering to the principles of the style is the next level in practice. Of course, this kind of modification should be an evolution, not devolution. Also, it is an essential stage to creating your own style. The eighth stage is the Kong Jiazi or emptying the Jiazi. Traditionally, it is not explicitly used in the old documents. However, some expressions in those old documents, such as uh, unify with the Tao, return to the primordial, and so on, are some examples of this concept. This is an even higher level of a personal pursuit of self-actualization through practice, which deserves a whole lecture if not multiple lectures which I will keep for the future. The 8th stage method covers different stages of one's practice. I believe that practicing the internal styles can provide a great deal of benefit to us. To achieve those, we need to follow the right practice path. Training is not about perfection, but it is a journey of mastery. Topic 4. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a small movement of Xiang Xing Shu. I introduced Xue Dian and his Xiang Xing Shu in my prior video titled Xue Dian, A Legend, has his Xing Yixuan and Xiang Xing Shu. If you have not watched that video, I hope you will pause this one and watch that one first. Link is in the description. Xue Dian is a very important figure in Xing Yi history. His Xiang Xing Shu actually is a variation of Xing Yi Quan. It is the result of Bian Jiazi or changing the Jiazi. This movement is one of his five method forms. Okay, let me demonstrate one of the Xue Dian's Xiang Xing Shu practice, which is a result of Bian Jiaz or changing the form. <laughs> Topic 6 Takeaways First, Understanding the different stages of practice can offer many benefits to practitioners. It is a systematic way of training the traditional art and the practitioners will improve their practice dramatically after following the right path. They also provide short-term goals which serve as consistent motivators for long-term practice. Second, carriers of skill. Single movement, forms, and routines are the carriers of skill. A skill simply cannot exist without the basic physical movements. At the same time, you need to know how to correctly practice the movement in order to convert it to a skill. Clearly defined training steps help you achieve that. 3. Eight stage method. In spite by training documents written by prior generations, I created the eight stage method to help practitioners understand the training path. Those eight stages include Xue or learning, Shun or smoothing, Zheng or correcting, Chai or analyzing, Ding or stabilizing, Huo or reviving, Bian or changing, Kong or emptying. <coughs> Four, I also demonstrated a very short but very rare Xiang Xing Shu movement created by Xue Dian. It demonstrates the result of his 
变价值 or changing the 价值 which is the seventh stage in the eight stage method. Don't forget to check it out. That brings us to the end of today's video. Again, please post your questions for next week in the comments section or email me for any amity. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.